जन्मादिया से यताम यरिता रस्ता चाहती सभी क्या स्वराग ते ने ब्रह्मारुदया अधिकावाये मोजंतिजा सूरया दमनस्वेना सदा निरस्ता कुहकम और तेजो परिम निदां विनी जतो मायोर जात्र त्रिसागो मुरस्या दमनस्वेना सदा निरस्ता कुहकम सत्यं परम दी माहि ओम ओम अलो श्रीकृष्णा सनो वासुदेव all from uh, all, all pervading personal God. Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Uh, pardon? I meditate upon Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. He is the cause of all causes, the creation sustenance. And destruction of manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other truth beyond him. He is he only who first imparted Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original created being. Only because of him only do the material universes. Oh, no, so. <laughs> Very nice, yeah. By, uh, by him, the great sages and the amigos are put into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water sin fire, of water sin, land sin water. By him, even the great sages, and then, oh, sorry, by him, only because of me, do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reaction with most of nature, therefore, is appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Sri Krishna. Whose eternal existence in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the reaction of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Prujita Kaitavutra. Paramo Nirma Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Astra Vastu Shivadam Taputrayo Mlanam Shmar Bhagavate Mahamunukite Kim Vapare Ishwarha Sadhya Rudhya Varudhya Tetra Tritubhish Shushubhi Tatkyanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana pronounces the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana pronounces the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from illusion, from the welfare world. Such truth are proofs of three folds. Such truth are rooted threefold miseries. This is a beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of the other scriptures? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kalpatoro Galitam Alam. Sugama Kadam Ritatrava Sangitam. 
Therefore, this food has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shravantam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Bhadrani. We do not see Surit Satam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literature, but to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as the best wishing friend, and purifies the body who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta praisha bhadrishu, nitam bhagavata sevaya, bhagavati uttamasloke, bhakti bhavati nastiki. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhava, Kamaloba dayaschay, Cheta etar and avidam, Cheta etar and avidam, Sitam sadve By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion of ignorance. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, well, these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. He understands the sons of God perfectly. Chidyante Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the heart of the material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Enable us to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna the, consciousness. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna and his devotees in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Shrimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 1, Chapter 17, Verse Number 33. Navartitav yam tadadharma bandho. Navartitav yam tadadharma bandho. Dharmena satyena chavartitav ye. Dharmena satyena chavartitav ye. Brahma vate yatra vajanti yagya. Brahma vate yatra yajanti yagya. Yajneshwaram yagna vitana vichna. Yajneshwaram yagna vitana vichna. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Therefore, O friend of irreligion, you do not deserve to remain in a place where experts perform sacrifices according to truth and religious principles for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of God. Purport. 
by his divine grace. A say Bhakti Vinata Swami Prabhupada. Yajneshwara, or the Supreme Person of Godhead, is the beneficiary of all kinds of sacrificial ceremonies. Such sacrificial ceremonies are prescribed differently in the scriptures for different ages. In other words, sacrifice means to accept the supremacy of the Lord and thereby perform acts by which the Lord may be satisfied in all respects. The atheists do not believe in the existence of God, and they do not perform any sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord. Any place or country where the supremacy of the Lord is accepted and thus sacrifice is performed is called Brahman Varta. There are different countries in different parts of the world, and each and every country may have different types of sacrifice to please the Supreme Lord. But the central point in pleasing him is ascertained in the Bhagavatam, and it is truthfulness. The basic principle of religion is truthfulness, and the ultimate goal of all religions is to satisfy the world. In the age of cult, the greatest common formula for sacrifice is the Sankirtan Yajna. That is the opinion of the experts who know how to propagate the process of yajna. Lord Chaitanya prescribed this method of yajna, and it is understood from this verse that the sacrificial method of Sankirtan Yajna may be performed anywhere and everywhere in order to drive away the personality of Kali and save human, human society from falling prey to the influence of this age. Srila Prabhupada Kinija. So there it is. Sankirtan Yajna is the Yuga Dharma. And the way to perform it is by going out and chanting ecstatically the holy names of the Lord and loudly so people can hear, see your happiness, see your joy, see your ecstasy and think either they're crazy or they got something that I don't have that I, I may want to have. So if they think you're just crazy they'll ignore you. If they think you've found something that's so good that it makes you happy and satisfied you have succeeded in preaching, not by talking, simply by dancing and chanting and showing your happiness. What's the matter? So we learned already that the symptoms of Kali Yuga, when all is said and done, is dissatisfaction and always feeling the fear of uh, anxiety or the, 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 the specter of anxiety uh, bothering people. So these two things are the symptoms of Kali Yuga. And everyone who is avoiding Krishna consciousness has these symptoms. It's a disease just like Coronavirus is a disease, and it's understood by its symptoms. There's so many uh, web pages that are advertising the symptoms. If you have coronavirus, you know you you got a headache, you got a tummy ache, you have a fever, you uh, your taste buds are 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 not acting properly or functioning properly. And, your teeth are falling out. <laughs> There's so many symptoms of it, right? But the, the symptom of a person who is dissatisfied and who is always plagued by anxiety means that they are not following the regular principles. They are not chanting 16 good rounds a day. And they're not basically in Krishna consciousness. Doesn't matter whether you're initiated or not initiated. If you're feeling, or if we are feeling, dissatisfaction and anxiety, those are the symptoms of Kali Yuga. And we should understand that. Now, of course, the way to overcome those symptoms 
is also explained here. It's called Harinam Sankirtan, chanting the holy names of the Lord, dancing nicely and ecstatically. So, we have the formula for success. Everything is here. You don't need anything else. What is the need of any other scripture? Yeah, yeah, that's what it says in Bhagavatam. It's the perfection of life simply by hearing or simply by chanting or simply by respecting Mahaprasadam. All these problems go away. But yet, do we believe it? That is the question. Just like Shakespeare's famous line is, to be or not to be? That is the question. But we can alter that a little bit. To believe or not to believe? That is the question. <laughs> so, so it says here that, what is the need of any other scripture? So in Bhagavatam 1.2, 1 1.1.2, this beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great Sivyasa Deva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. And there you are. That's why we should come every day and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. This establishes the Lord in our heart. In other words, Lord is there, but now we become very, very conscious that the Lord is there. And that makes us very confident that simply by chanting Hare Krishna and following the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness, we can attain all perfection in this life. You don't have to do anything else. In fact, that's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita. And it says, Shadavala Pate Jnanam Tat Pranam Samgitendriya Jnanam Ladva Pranam Samtim Achiren Adhigatshati Fourth chapter, 39th verse says, A faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge. And having achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Fourth chapter, 39th verse. The Prabhupada explains in the purport, such knowledge in Krishna consciousness can be achieved by a faithful person who firmly, who believes firmly in Krishna. So therefore, our motto today is to believe or not to believe. That is the question. Do we actually believe that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Do we actually act as if Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Or is it all just something like anything else? Uh, do you believe Mickey Mouse believes? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. If you believe he, that he exists, then you'll go to Disneyland to see him. And if you believe Krishna exists, you'll go to Vrindavan. Or you'll come to the temple every day to see him. So, to believe or not to believe in Mickey Mouse, or to believe or not to believe in Krishna? That is the question. So, if you believe in the stock market, you'll go to the stock market every day. If you believe in, uh, I don't know, in politics, you'll go to, to the news about politics every day. If you believe that uh, so-and-so movie star is great, you'll go to see their movies. If you believe such and such a singer is good, you'll go and buy his records. If you believe some book is great, you'll go and buy the book. But if you believe that Krishna is the Supreme Person, I got it, then you will always come to the temple to see Krishna, bow down to Krishna, chant Krishna's name, and so forth. And you'll go out in public and chant Krishna's name, and distribute Krishna prasadam, and so forth. So it all depends on what you believe. So only one is called a faithful man who thinks that simply by acting in Krishna consciousness, he or she can attain the highest perfection. This faith is attained by the discharge of devotional service and by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare, Hare Hare, which cleanses one's heart of all material dirt. 
Over and above this, one should control the senses. A person who is faithful to Krishna and who controls the senses can easily attain perfection in the knowledge of Krishna consciousness without delay. So this is better than fast food. Without delay, you can attain perfection in Krishna consciousness by being faithful to Krishna and controlling the senses, including the mind. So yesterday we discussed some interesting things. I want to go over it a little bit more because scientists, they, you know, uh, they pride themselves in knowing about matter. But actually, they're ignorant of matter. Their explanations don't even come close to explaining what matter is. Of course, they use big words and you get all confused and they oh, well, they must know what they're talking about. I didn't understand one word they said. And they purposely choose words that are very obscure so that you don't immediately understand it. And usually people are too lazy to look in the dictionary to see what the word means. So they just say, well, he must know what he's talking about. I don't understand one damn word. So <laughs> that's, the, that's their trick. They're very clever people to trick people. See. They are experts in lying and cheating and misleading people. Oh, we went to the moon and now we're going to Mars. They haven't gone to the moon. When Christopher Columbus so-called discovered the West Indies, he was looking for the East Indies and he discovers the West Indies. And when he went back and told the people in Europe, immediately the investors came out and they paid for build, building better and better boats and they sent one boat after another to this new world. And it was a bonanza. They, they raped the, the Mayan uh, civilization. Then they raped the Inca civilization. Then they raped the uh, Indians in North America and in Canada. And they ripped, up, they ripped them off and gave them syphilis and other bad things and liquor, destroyed their cultures and made money off of them. Uh, that's what you do when you discover a new country or if you can go to a new planet, you exploit it. What do they have to show for having gone to the moon? Six stones in the Smithsonian Institute and those stones look exactly like the stones in New Mexico. That's what they have to show for it. They don't have one darn penny of, of uh, benefit. Now they're talking about, well, you know, there's no water on the moon, that's why we didn't, we're not gonna go there anymore. We're gonna go to Mars. And in the meantime, we're going to exploit all the precious metals on the asteroids. But that's what SpaceX, says they're going to do, that's what all these people say they're going to do. They haven't done any of it, right? But after Christopher Columbus, you better bet that Spaniards and the Italians and the Dutch, they made a lot of money by coming to the new world and exploiting it and killing people and stealing from them and ruining their culture and giving them syphilis. <clears throat> So, why can people lie like this and get away with it? Well, this was explained by Goebbels. Goebbels was Hitler's publicity man. He said, if you're gonna tell a lie, tell such a big lie that people are afraid to think it's not true. If you give a little lie, they'll figure it out right away. But if it's a big lie, like we went to the moon, and here's what we have to show for it. They showed the moon landing. Of course, I was watching that in 19, I think it was 1968. And they showed it on television. And on the little, little, little prints on the one side of the television screen, it said, simulated moon landing. You know what that means? You know what that means, Prabhu? Simulated landing? Prabhu? Prabhu? Yeah. You know what that means, simulated landing? Mm, no. <laughs> it means it's not true. Now look the word up in the dictionary. Look it up in the dictionary. Simulated. It means they've been put on a Hollywood production. You see? It was a, it was a fantastic Hollywood production of landing on the moon. Every, 
idiots like me were watching and thought, oh, wow, they landed on the moon. This is so exciting. This is a great achievement for America. The whole thing was nonsense. It's still nonsense today. And still they're lying about it. You see? This is what happens when in Kali Yuga. And, and let's read what Prabhupada says about that. Uh, you want to read me? Yeah. Okay. Having a resemblance in appearance or nature, alike, though not identical. <laughs> exactly right. Simulated <laughs> moon landing. It was a Hollywood production. You see? So. <laughs> you say, first, say, having corresponding angles, equal and corresponding <laughs> line segments. <laughs> yeah, well, the black and white dots on the television said looked like the moon, but it wasn't the moon. It was simulated. Right. Simulated. <laughs> right. So, so let's let's see what Prabhupada says here. This is very interesting. Uh, he says. He says here. He says that in Kali Yuga, austerity, cleanliness, and mercy are not, are not there. Don't the exist anymore. Only truthfulness exists. But then he says. that even truthfulness is diminishing by massive lying propaganda. Why did he say that? He says, but in the age of Kali, the executive heads of state will be indifferent to such religious principles and therefore under their patronage, the opponents of religious principles such as greed, falsehood, cheating, and pilfering will naturally follow, and so there will be no meaning to propaganda crying to stop corruption in the state. And then after that he says, there are different countries in different parts of the world, and each and every country may have different types of sacrifice to please the Supreme Lord. But the central point is pleasing him is ascertained in the Bhagavatam, and it is truthfulness. The basic principle of religion is truthfulness, and the ultimate goal of all religions is to satisfy the Lord. In this age of Kali, the greatest common formula of sacrifice is the Sankirtan Yagya. That is the opinion of the experts who know how to propagate the process of Yagya. Yeah, wait a minute. That's not what I want. Yeah, anyway, he says in the previous purport that, uh, and therefore under their patronage, uh, that is the, the corrupt leaders of society, the opponents of religious principles such as greed, falsehood, falsehood means lying, cheating is also a type of lying, and pilfery, stealing, will naturally follow, and so there will be no meaning to propaganda crying to stop corruption in the state. So in other words, there's a massive program of lying in Kali Yuga, even though the only thing that's existing now is truthfulness, but that is being wiped out also by this lying propaganda uh, in this age. And they have to keep lying because the, to keep the, it, it's like a Ponzi scheme. What is a Ponzi scheme? It is when you're offering, I mean this happens in India a lot, you offer people 15% every month if they invest money in your company. 15% uh, interest every month. So everyone goes crazy. Yeah, yeah, we want this. You know, so they invest their money. And so as long as they keep making new people that are stupid enough to put their money in that company, they're able to pay the interest to the other people before them. So you have to keep convincing people to invest. And that way you keep alive the, the hoax that you're giving 15%. And then eventually, if you're, not, if you're not making enough people to join, then the whole thing collapses. So that's what happened to this guy named Madoff. He had the, one of the biggest Ponzi schemes in the history 
of the stock market. And when it collapsed, he had ripped off $50 billion from the people. At one point, he wasn't able to pay the 15% or 10% or whatever he was promising because he didn't make enough new clients. And therefore, the whole thing collapsed. So this is, this is the type of line. That, that, have you ever heard of this in India? No? Yeah. Did I hear huh? it? Yes? It's called Chit Fund. What's that? Chit Fund. Chit Fund. Yeah. Chit means what? Well, chit means truth. I don't it? know. <laughs> no, no. Chit. Chit means truth or knowledge. Anyway, the chit fund. Tell us what happened to the chit fund in India. Um, I don't know. Speak in the microphone. Chit. It was a chit. Oh, no, that's a hard. Chitta. Hard. Yeah, I, I don't know much, but uh, when I was in school, I, I heard a like, lot of cheating about the chit fund. Like, Yeah. Deposit for high interest. High interest, That's yeah. It. 10, yeah. 15, 20% every month. Yeah, and then run away with the money. And then they run away with the money. And yeah. when they can't pay the 15% because they don't make enough new people coming in, they just run away. Yeah. Cheat fund, yes. Cheating. <laughs> you see, I mean, all this stuff is analyzed here in the Bhagavatam. But we have to be able to read it and remember it. It's, it's like we're going one verse after another with all these fantastic purports, but we have to go back and actually go over it again to understand exactly what it is so that we don't forget it. You know? So here he says, as the basic principles of Brahminical culture, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness, became curtailed by proportionate development of pride attachment for women and intoxication. The path of salvation or the path of transcendental bliss retreated far, far away from human society. When the progression, progression of the age of Kali, people are becoming very proud. With the progression of the age of Kali, people are becoming very proud and attached to women and intoxication. So again, I want to just make it clear. When it says women, it means any object of attraction. So nowadays you see women become attracted to women. Men become attracted to men. Now they can legally get married now, you see. So don't think that it means only women as a class. The women, it's just like Lord Chaitanya says, the danam, the janam, the sundanam. Kavitam, so he says sundarim. Sundarim means anything that you're attracted to. See? And, and it catches your attention, you become attracted to it. Just like one time, it's an interesting story, a village story from the old country. One time there was a guy and he had a shop. And, but he had a special thing about him. He would say, Every time he'd wake up in the morning, the first thing he'd say is, uh, is, uh, This means in, in the Armenian language, glories to Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. And I curse the Satan to like that. So he, he kept saying it maybe 50 times in the day. You know, just like we say, Hari Bol Jai, all glories to Prabhupada, you know, Hari Krishna, right? This guy was saying this every day, many, many times. You know? So finally, Satan got sick and tired of hearing this. And he decided to teach the guy a lesson. Because this guy was cursing him every day. Of course, he was glorifying Jesus, but cursing him. So what happened? One day, a donkey appeared in the town center. And of course, this guy, you know, when he would wake up, he would say that. When he, oh, so he was walking to the shop, he would say that. And when he'd arrive at the shop, when he put his key in the door to open it, he'd say, Dyarane, he to see, Christus, see, Nahlet, Satanayim. Glories to Jesus Christ, and I curse Satan. 
But when he said that, he noticed that there was a donkey just standing there by himself. So he just noticed it, didn't take paying attention. He opens up his shop, and he's sitting in the shop waiting for his customers. But he sees the donkey. So at lunchtime, when he closes the shop to go home to eat, he says, you know, glory to Jesus, and I, I curse Satan. But he sees the donkey there. So he's a little curious, you know. So he goes and looks at the donkey, you know, and it looks like pretty good. It's pretty, you know, it's not an old donkey. It's not sick. Doesn't have any arthritis or anything, you know. So he doesn't think anything about it. He goes home, and then he comes back to open the shop again. The donkey's still there. So he's, he's thinking to himself, well, nobody claims this donkey. I'm going to take it. Right? I might be able to use it. So again, you know, glory to Jesus, curse the devil. And, he's, and then so when he locks the door at night, the donkey is still there. So he goes and looks at the donkey, pets a little bit. The donkey, you know, is like surrendered, you know. So he just leads the donkey back to his home and feeds it. And now, one thing leads to another. This is an amazing donkey. So instead of him closing the shop, going home and eating, and then coming back again, he teaches the donkey to go home, pick up the prashadam from his wife, the food from his wife, and, and bring it back to him. And in this way, in many different ways, the donkey becomes his main consciousness because it's an amazing donkey, right? <laughs> so this is going on, it's perfect, and everyone's congratulating him for having such an amazing donkey, and his wife says, it's an amazing donkey. So one day, I mean, he keeps saying, you know, glory to Jesus and hell with, the, with Satan, you know, may, may he stay in hell forever. So one day, he, he closes his shop at night, and he, he's going to go sit on the donkey. And the donkey starts walking away from him, and then starts running. And he goes to the, uh, the fountain where you know, everyone can drink water. You know, all the horses and donkeys can drink water. He goes to the fountain and goes up into the faucet. The guy, the guy looks at it. He can't believe it. You know? So he runs over. He looks up in the faucet and he sees the tail of the donkey in the faucet. And he says, oh my God, the donkey is in the faucet. And he tries to turn the water on, it doesn't come out. And he's like shocked. And all the way he goes home, he's no longer, no longer saying, curse the devil. He's saying, the donkey is in the faucet. And he goes home, and I say, how's everything? How was the business today? How much did we make? He said, the donkey's in the forest. She said, what? What, you, what? what did you say? He said, the donkey's in the faucet. She said, what? What, what are you saying? He said, the donkey's in the faucet. He <laughs> said, OK, why don't you go sleep now, and, and you'll feel better tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so he wakes up in the morning, and the wife says, come down, you can have some breakfast. Said, no, 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 the donkey's in the faucet. She said, what? What's wrong with you? He said, the donkey's in the faucet. She said, come, I'll show you. He said, what do you mean the donkey's in the faucet? Where's the donkey? He said, the donkey's in the faucet. <laughs> so he's no longer saying hell with the devil, right? So he, he opens the shop. And customers come in and say, well, how much is this? And he said, the donkey's in the faucet. <laughs> they said, what? <laughs> I, I just asked you how much is The donkey's in the faucet. <laughs> so they realize there's something wrong with him, right? So, you know, then his cousins come and his brothers come and they're talking to him and say, what was this, the donkey? He said, come on, I'll show you, the donkey's in the faucet. They go and look in the faucet and there's no donkey there. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, no, it was there. They said, well, okay, well, I think you need a rest. <laughs> <laughs> so they let him rest for a week, and they opened the shop for him, right? And after a week, they talked to him again and said, the donkey's in the faucet. <laughs> so it just gets so bad. I mean, the news goes all over the town, right? Mm -hmm. It's a small town. So finally, because he doesn't stop saying that, they put him in an asylum, you know, for crazy people. You know, it's, maybe he'll... 
the doctors, you know, giving him, you know, shots and things like that, he'll get over it. Like, no. He keeps saying the doctors are the worst. So finally it gets serious because the shop's closed, the wife and the kids don't have any money, and you know, they're, 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 the relatives are supporting them, but they can't go on indefinitely, right? Mm -hmm. So the relatives decide we gotta go and talk to them. So all the men go, all the senior men go into the, into the crazy house, right? They sit down with them and they say, look, we accept that the donkey is in the faucet. You understand? We accept it. We no. believe it. Right? <laughs> but if you keep saying this, you can't get out of this crazy house. And your wife doesn't have any money left, and we can't support her anymore. We don't, we don't, we can't support the family, and the shop's going to be sold. They said, do you understand? He said, put the donkeys in the faucet. <laughs> they said, look, we told you we believe it. We told you we believe it. Okay? Let's not talk about the donkeys anymore. <laughs> we believe you. But please, they said, please. If they, you know, every month they have an you know, evaluation meeting with the psychologist. <laughs> if they ask you, is, where's the donkey? You say, what donkey? He said, the donkey's in the faucet. No, no, there's no donkey in the faucet. And they'll let you. He said, okay, okay. I'll try and do it. <laughs> so they have that meeting, a monthly meeting, and they say, so how's the donkey? They said, what donkey? You know, the one that's in the faucet. <laughs> so, I, I don't think there's any donkey in the faucet. <laughs> and they let him out. They let him out, right? So now he goes home, wife is happy, and she wants to accompany him to open the store. So the next morning, they, they walk to the store, and he hasn't said the donkey's in the faucet, right? And as the wife is opening the store, she says, glory to Jesus, and may the devil go to hell. And she said, repeat it now. And the, glory to Jesus, and, 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 and the devil go to hell. She said, very good. Now you sit down and do your business. You know. <laughs> Don't mention you know what. Said, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I go to the shop. People come and say, how you doing? How's the donkey? Said, what donkey? <laughs> oh, you're better now. I said, yeah, yeah, there's no donkey. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that night, when he locks the shop, you know, no one's in the marketplace. Right? So he quietly walks over to the faucet and looks up and there's the tail of the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, he says, Tiarune Jesus Christo said, nah, let Sadhanayin. He says, glory to Jesus. And may the devil go to hell. <laughs> and he gets better, but he never says it again. Never says that again. You see? So this is a this is a this is a, it sounds like a silly story. <laughs> But actually, it's true. People are saying, we went to the moon. Oh, I can change my gender. Oh, uh, there's, uh, uh, you know, we're going to uh, start a new business and make money and be happy. And we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. So they're saying, it's the same as the donkey is in the faucet. Mm. It's the same thing, there's no difference. See? They're thinking, I'm gonna live forever. I'll get uh, frozen in nitrogen gas and then when I when they find the the solution to my disease they'll unfreeze me and I'll live forever. It's all a bunch of nonsense. It's all lies. And one lie is bigger than the next lie nowadays. So unless we understand and but while they're lying to themselves and lying to others, they're dissatisfied and they're feeling anxiety. Those are two symptoms of this age. So, unless we believe what we're reading here and understand it, we're going to be completely baffled also. We'll also, even though we know the truth, we will just go along like a lemming with, the, with, the, with the, all the other lemmings and jump over the cliff, right? And believe that there is salvation in material prosperity, there is salvation in... Uh, science, their salvation, and reason, and logic, and, and argument, and so forth. No, there's no salvation in those things. It's all 
taking our mind away from Krishna. The only salvation is fixing the mind on Krishna. And let me, let me read something that's very interesting, right in the introduction of Bhagavad Gita. This introduction that Prabhupada wrote of Bhagavad Gita is one of the most amazing things I've ever read in my life. He says, he says, he says here, so Bhagavad Gita contains the complete knowledge of Vedic wisdom. The Vedic knowledge is infallible. And Hindus accept Vedic knowledge to be complete and infallible. And then he says, so Vedic knowledge is complete because it is above all doubts and mistakes. And Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. Vedic knowledge is not a question of research. Our research work is imperfect because we are researching things with imperfect senses. We have to accept perfect knowledge which comes down as is stated in Bhagavad Gita by the parampara disciplic succession. We have to receive knowledge from the proper source in disciplic succession beginning with the supreme spiritual master, the Lord himself, and hand it down to a succession of spiritual masters. Arjuna, the student who took lessons from Lord Sri Krishna, accepts everything that he says without contradicting him. One is not allowed to accept one portion of Bhagavad Gita and not another. No. We must accept Bhagavad Gita without interpretation, without deletion, and without our own whimsical participation in the matter. The Gita should be taken as the most perfect presentation of Vedic knowledge. There it is. You, you ever, <laughs> it's amazing what he's writing here, mm -hmm. right? You know, I mean, this introduction is the most brilliant thing I've ever read, uh, heard. Yeah, I'm, I'm incredible. Yeah. And he's, he's giving the truth in a concentrated form right here. Right? So now make your decision. You're going to invest in the chit, what was that called? Chit, chit fund. Chit, chit fund. fund? Or you're going to invest in Krishna's fund. <laughs> you decide which one you want. Hare Krishna. All grace to Srila Prabhupada. This is the Bhagavad Gita fund. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? So, Sankirtan is the, the yagya for this age. Yeah. So, why people are finding it difficult to do it? Because it's really when, it com when you compare with previous performances of Yagya and, and this uh, Kali Yuga chanting Hare Krishna. So it doesn't, it's not complicated. But why people are not taking it seriously, They're including including those are devotees too, you know. They, you know they're performing other vrata, they're doing so many other things like we talked yesterday. And they, they you know, they, they, they get themselves away from the holy name. You know, they try to perform different other things and this and that, you know. What? Well, Prabhupada explains that nobody wants to be a beggar, especially someone who has a good education, has a nice house, nice car, a nice family. They don't want to look like a beggar. Mm. So when you go out on Sankatan, people consider you a beggar. Even though you might not be asking for money, because we're trying to or for the books, but nobody wants to be a beggar, especially someone who's making, let's say, $250,000 a year and has a big house and a nice car, and nice clothes and everything, big, big uh, closet full of clothes and shoes <laughs> and jewelry and this and money and so So they don't want to be a beggar. But they are beggars. Well, they're begging for a job. Yeah, exactly. When you lose a job, you go around begging for another job. You know, please, give exactly. me a job. Right. Big time. Can't pay my mortgage. So, yeah, nobody wants to be a beggar. But see, this is the question. Amanitvam adamitvam ahimsa santirachma charyapasana socham staryam atma vindikraya. 
that the beginning of knowledge and the most and, and is humility. You have to be humble. To be able to preach, you have to be humble. If you're condescending to be with it, oh, you can't understand what we have because you're not smart enough. If you preach to people like that, you might not even say those words, but the attitude might be there. They don't want to listen to what you say. They say, this person is so puffed up, you know, they think they know everything and they're treating me like I'm dirt. I'm not going to listen to what they say. So in order to convince people, you have to be humble. You have to put it, as, as it says, Prabhupada says, he quotes that verse, you put a straw in your mouth, you fall at the feet, other persons, and you say, oh, sir, you are so intelligent, mm -hmm. you're a so prominent person, and I, everyone respects you. I only have one request. Please listen to my humble request. Just forget everything you know and surrender to Krishna. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, if you fall down at their feet and speak honestly like that and, and humbly, then who wants to do that? You're going to fall down at somebody's feet? Some person is eating meat and, and, game, and gambling and all that stuff and say, please, you're so prominent, you're so intelligent, please, just chant Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. No, nobody's going to do that. Uh, very few people are willing to be so humble. And, and, and people think, you know, most people just say, oh, you're crazy, you know. So then you feel as though, oh, I'm a beggar. And, and People are making fun of me. I'm not going to do this anymore. There's something like in the mature world, nobody wants to be servant. Yeah. It's the same principle. Yeah. Exactly. Nobody wants to be. Although they're servant, they're serving anyway. Everybody's a servant. But they don't admit it. Yeah. It's just, it's just the thought that you servant. You no. Know, everybody wants to be. Um, Everybody's happy when he's considered to be a master. Yes. But it's you know, a master of your mind and senses. Well, it's amazing that the, the, the material and spiritual is just the opposite. Yes. That's the false ego. That's what we talked about yesterday. Thomas Abudi. Mm. Intelligence and ignorance. It is. The subtle force, that's the subtle state of the false ego. And mm. then it goes even further. Let's, let's just repeat that again. Okay. What we, what the, it's very important. It's a short little paragraph, Prabhupada says. The five great elements are gross representations of the false ego, which in turn represents the primal stage of false ego, technically called the materialistic conception or tamasa buddhi, intelligence and ignorance. This further represents the unmanifested stage of the three modes of material nature. The unmanifested modes of nature, material nature, are called pradana. Look how subtle it gets. It gets more and more subtle until you get to the pradana, which you can't see. Mm. But it is the unmanifested state of the three modes of material nature. And then when it expands, it becomes this intelligence and ignorance for the material conception. Again, it's a subtle thing. And then that expands into the primal stage of false ego. I mean, and, and expands into the false ego itself. So this is something that should be studied very carefully and discussed so that we understand what it is. Is there a question? Six, uh, this was a homework the other day that I gave. Six chapter, what is it, 30? 640? 6.40, yeah. So all I can get from anybody is that you asked everybody to read 6.40 in the Gita, and then we're going to discuss it, but that's as far as I got. We're discussion about it, yeah. Well, it's a little late now, we can't do it now. So tomorrow morning, uh, we'll discuss this. Tomorrow morning? Yeah, if you haven't read it, have another chance to read it.
Is there anything specific you want us to try to get? Because it looks like it talks about the difference between. No, you have to really understand the last paragraph. The last paragraph? That, uh, verse. Oh, that purport. The last paragraph is very important. Okay. Six. Six forty. Six forty. Nahi kalyana durgatim tatakachati. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. It's a very nice verse. Of course, the more verse, the more Sanskrit to it than that. But that's that's a very significant. Line. But the last paragraph of that purport is extremely important because it explains who is not actually protected by Krishna, even though they may look like they're Krishna devotees. Who's not protected, okay. Not protected. I'll make a note of it this time. Thank you.